everybody, you are listening to The Sock Drawer with Salem and Dusty. I am Salem. I am Dusty. And today we have a very special guest from Buffalo, New York, our good friend, UA. Hello, UA. Hey, Salem, what's going on, bud? I am doing just fine. How are you doing, my friend? Long-ass drive, and I am so ready to take a nap after this shithole's done. Well, how long was the drive for you? About three hours, three. usual. Okay. And when did you start your drive? Uh... Got out of bed about 5.30, got on the road that's by all, That's Honestly, that's all we needed to hear, 5.30. Oh, all right. You're a trooper, my friend. I didn't even bother to get up till 7 today. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't even out of bed until 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was about 9 o'clock. I wasn't even out of bed. Uh, but yeah, you are a trooper, my friend. You are such, in fact, a trooper that you work... At a casino. And that's why I'm taking a four-day weekend. It's because I work at a fucking casino. And you came to visit our show? And you and you came to visit us. I don't know if this is more relaxing than the crap that I deal with on a near-daily basis. Huh? Like what? Well, do you really want me to get into just how much money I saw changing hands this weekend? Is that something that you could talk about? Yeah. I can't name names. Okay, then. As long I'd... as you won't get in trouble at work. I can't name names. Go ahead. Well, I work in one of the bigger casinos in the Western New York region, and we are very well known for having the best experiences around. And this weekend we had a blackjack tournament, which brought in a shit ton of people. And of course, when you have a tournament going on, you have people wanting to play outside of it. And we had a new person come in who decided that he wanted to shove his money around here there and everywhere and it's like okay yeah we we see this before yada 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 two hundred thousand dollars he drops two hundred thousand between blackjack and mini bock don't ask me how to play mini bock that is the most confusing table game on the planet i'm not gonna ask you how to play it but, but like, did he, did he lose it? i don't know i just know that he dropped 200 what do they use to play mini box is that cards is that dice? it's cards yeah okay it's a card set. Never heard of it. I'm gonna have to Google that. Yeah. Mini Bach. It's an Asian inspired game. A lot of Asians play it. It's. Con I've seen it explained once. Okay. It is confusing as fucking hell. All right. So, I uh, I have a, 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 I guess a bit of a strange question. Um, now, New York that I know uh, has issues with uh, having any more than just slots in their casinos. So yeah. I'm assuming the casino you're working at is on some sort of Indian reservation? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Because I'm just looking at your white ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, no native in me, unfortunately. I know I'm a mutt, but I don't know what type I, of mutt I, I guess, am. I guess I'm just imagining what your interview was like. I'm just like imagining just like this just stoic person on the other side of the deck just like... How many bison you kill? <laughs> oh, don't go there. That's I, I was gonna not say, don't, nice. That, that, that you need to be careful about. Um, no, uh, interview was a traditional interview. Oh, okay. Nothing fancy outside of that. I will say, though, the there's only four casinos in the West New York region, three of which are owned by the Seneca Nation, one of which is owned by Erie County. Okay. That one specifically is nothing but slots. So yeah. That, so that rule still is in place. And I just, I can't stand that. I can't stand nothing. I don't understand people slots. sitting there just hitting a button for yeah, hours. That's what it is these days and now. It, it's, it's it really is. Button. How because is that fun? It, I mean, some of them do have the stick on the side that you can do, but it's almost entirely there for posterity's sake. But here's the issue that I have with slots, especially modern day slots. Back in the day, when you had slots, you'd pull a lever and that lever activated a bunch of different gear systems or whatever within the machine. And there wasn't any way to rig against the player uh, those machines. Like if it was going to be a jackpot, it was going to be a jackpot. Yeah. But, but with these, these newfangled, you touch the button machines, it is so easy to just rig uh, the... Uh, the um, algorithm in any computer any code of anything and so they could just do whatever the hell they wanted with that and i i don't know if that's a thing to be worried about with casinos um well that's not my department i i honestly couldn't tell you what goes into the maintenance the innards anything to do with the slot machines or the table games so what is your department 
my department is just handing out the money when you lose it. <laughs> when, when, when you've lost all your money and you want to keep playing, you come see me. I take money from your cards, from your checks. No, we don't take your houses or your cars anymore, but... So you enable the gamblers. Oh, damn straight. Okay. And oh, I'm my. damn good at it, too. I, I used to work at a gas station. And... So did I. <laughs> And I was, uh, I would always be there behind the counter watching these people go to the, um, go to the lotto ticket machines Mm -hmm. and they'd be there for hours. Oh, absolutely. They'd be there for hours. I used to have my regulars that I would have their entire sheet already mapped out for them and I know what time it was because of when they would walk in the door and I'd be like, okay, here you go, bud. Okay. So moral question, does that make me an an enabler for not saying anything to them? Just letting them do it. You can't say anything. That's your job. Your job is to sell the tickets. When it comes to gas stations, I would say no, because you are simply doing your job. They they have an entire store of things that they could be buying, because you could say that you're an enabler for giving somebody cigarettes or giving someone alcohol. Yeah. But, whereas in my position at an actual casino, yes, I am technically doing that, but in front of them, we also have pamphlets and everything on alcohol addiction on gambling addiction being like hey you know we appreciate the fact that you're giving us money for doing this and yes you may be winning but in actuality you are giving us money but you know maybe there's a problem here and if so we we don't want we we appreciate the fact that you're patronage but we also don't want to see you destroy yourself right Right. I didn't know you guys did that. I, 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 I'll be honest. I've been to a casino maybe 12 times in my life. Each time I went there for the buffet. Exactly. I didn't actually go to the gambling <laughs> section. Exactly. So I don't know what a gambling section looks like. I'm not I'm not too big on casinos. I was at a casino. Oh, you got to try uh, the buffet. No, <laughs> not every buffet is equal. I was I was at a casino in uh, in Colorado. And I can't remember the town I was in in Colorado. I was just visiting for uh, for holidays a couple years ago. and uh, But one of, those, one of those places is just a big gambling city. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think every every location in Colorado is considered a city, but that's beside the point. Um, uh, we started off with just a hundred bucks, okay. and I sat at the craps table because craps is just what I like to play when I go to the casino. I'm not a blackjack guy, I'm not a slots guy, but I love shooting craps. And uh, I was the only one who was shooting craps. Well, I'm not the only one. That was the entire full table, but it was me shooting craps for like. 10 minutes straight i was i was just rolling the dice i was doing really good rolling those dice and people were loving me i was up 400 something dollars yeah that sounds by the, right by the time that i finally rolled and i couldn't i couldn't you know it was my turn it was over and it passes on to the person to your left and i said well i'm done it so was you actually took the 400 home yeah i took the 400 home wow. so it was because we were expected because it was there for uh, for New Year's, New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. So we were expected. To, we, we got there at like eight o'clock and we were going to be in there till midnight to have champagne when the ball drop, blah, blah, blah. OK, so from eight o'clock until midnight is is four hours. I was there for 10 minutes and I said, all right, I'm done. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> this kind of sounds like my first experience in a casino because the one in Erie County that we're able to go to is actually 18 and over because there's no alcohol being served mm-hmm. there. Oh, yeah. That's unusual. Well, not true. There is alcohol being served, but it's being served at the bar. Any of the cocktail servers they have around there cannot give okay. alcohol. Yeah. So that's how they're able to get away with 18 and up. And I went there for my 18th birthday with my dad. He gave me 20 bucks, and we went to a slot machine, and we played. Within 10 minutes, I was up $50. And I look at him, and I'm like, okay, I'm good. Here's, <laughs> here's your 20. I'm, yeah. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to be good. He's like, no, no, you keep playing. You you are you can hit again, and you can keep going. I'm like, no, nah, see, I know when to quit, so I'm good. And I got peer pressured into keep playing, and I left with two dollars in my pocket. When I first yeah. turned eighteen, I did not know when to quit, and uh, I, I dumped a hundred bucks. Well, fifty, fifty in two different segments. So fifty bucks here, fifty bucks here. I started with fifty. I was like, I'm gonna do my fifty. I'm gonna play slots because slots is all that uh, the casino up near up near uh, Niagara mm-hmm. um, had, and so slots lost it. Shit. 
went to go get some another 50 bucks slots lost it it was again like See, 10 that, that's minutes. why i can't gamble no. i'd rather just go out to eat or buy something that i could use the idea that i'm yeah. giving my money away i just cannot do it well but, and the other thing is a lot of the players that i see on a daily basis and yes i see players on a daily basis sometimes wearing the same clothes that they were wearing when i was there the night before they that is how they make a lot of their money is by gambling and they play either slots or tables and they just do not quit and i've seen one person in particular and again i can't name names and i'm not going to anyways but there's this one guy in particular that we all know he comes in maybe twice a month not even that sometimes but when he comes in we have to make sure that his entire thing is all cleared out. He's got no nothing to stop him. He's ready to go for as long as he wants to go. Dude hits on one of the old style machines, not one of the digital ones, because we still have a lot of the old regular mechanic ones. Mm -hmm. He hits on the machine for a gross amount of money, like six digits, gross amount of money. Okay. What makes this funny as hell is that this was a not a progressive slot machine. Right. A progressive slot machine, for anyone out there who doesn't know, is a slot machine that is hooked up to other slot machines of the same name at other casinos. Okay. So they're all pooling into the same jackpot. And when it pays out, it pays out from a third party. The casino itself is not responsible for right. taking the hit on that because they'll be reimbursed. No, this was a machine that we owned. Okay. Which meant we took the damn six-digit bullet on it. Okay. All I'm going to say on top of that is thank God he didn't ask for that all in cash. <laughs> oh, jeez. Because I've done, I've done some big cash payouts before that just made me shake my head afterwards. But thank God we didn't do this as a all-cash payout because I think I would have absolutely so just good committed for that second guy. coup. Yeah. Like, good for that guy. Yeah. So, we've actually segued pretty hard. Uh, I was actually hoping to hear a couple of some of just the crazy things that you have there, seen. There's a couple of the crazy things right there. I mean, yeah, somebody hitting big, but then you, you don't go to the ca a casino. A casino is a place where you go to people watch. Like, it's like Walmart, where you could just sit down at a bench and just people watch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, do you have any people watching stories at the casino? Not any recent ones. The best people watching story that I have seen is probably... Hmm. I don't even know if this counts as a people watching story, but we had we had we have a nightclub in our casino. Okay. So on the main floor you have the slot machines, you have the tables. We also have a section that is a bar, a huge and I do mean huge fucking big screen television okay. that we play all the sport games on. If it's something big going on, we have that playing. Okay. And then we also have a stage for a live band and a DJ okay. that plays during the weekend. Well, during the weekend, we have the DJ playing, and the dance floor is pretty packed, and a lot of our security is there instead of in other places, because that's where a lot of the trouble happens. I'm walking out at the end of my shift one day, and I'm walking behind this lady gotta be in her early 20s wearing high heels dressed to the nines looking gorgeous and she's on the phone and i'm not trying to cause any trouble or anything so i'm just minding my own business listening to my music on my earbuds and i'm hearing her bitch out the fact that she just got kicked out of the casino and well apparently she got kicked out of the casino because she decided to step on some toes that weren't supposed to be stepped on and threw a drink Okay. Which, you know, that automatically is cause for, okay, you just can't be here anymore. Time for you to sober up a little bit. Right. No. She decided to fight it. And, well, when you fight it, our security team is very, very professional, and they will absolutely es escort you out the door. Whether it's, whether, whether it's saying, hey, let's we're going to be getting going now, or whether it's picking you up by the your pants and going, all right. Well, I haven't seen that yet, but when I do see that, I will be back for the next session. 
so um <laughs> okay uh have you ever like had any stories of like just people just doing or saying just the dumbest stuff when it comes to i've heard stories of people soiling themselves at a slot machine because they refuse to get up to go to the bathroom because oh, they're God. getting ready to make that next hit that see is... that see no no all right I and I applaud I regret and asking. <laughs> <laughs> I applaud every casino's EVS team because da- god damn it that is unnecessary what is EVS? environmental services oh, so the okay. cleanup crew I I actually I have a good friend of mine Jimbo who uh, who does uh, EVS at a uh, casino in Pennsylvania mm-hmm. and he's been doing it what four or five years now. I have no idea how. Nope, neither do I. How? And it's like, anyone who does that, that is a thankless job, and you guys need to be commended, because There's that no... stuff right there is just wrong. There is no... I've heard money. the horror stories, and some of it is just wrong. Nope. 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 No amount of money you can pay me. I had a hard Absolutely. enough time cleaning the Kmart bathroom when that was my job. No. Absolutely not. And well, that was bad. I guess thanks for the stories. Hey, no problem. So, how bad are you at surprise parties? Giving them or taking them? <laughs> that was a horrible answer to literally any question <laughs> that anyone could ever ask you, period. <laughs> well, if I'm giving the party, I'm pretty good at it. Okay. If I'm at the receiving end, so I get a little It's upset. too damn okay. easy. Okay, so you're, you're giving a surprise party. How how, uh, how long in advance would you give that surprise party for? Me? I usually take about six months to plan it. Six months. That's half a year. Yeah, I got it. It's a surprise party. You got to do it right. Okay, right. Okay, so is that like for something big oh. or like this person is only turning twenty eight years? Oh old no no no! It's always for a big. It's always for a big. So like like a big thirty thirty yep. kind of thing. Yep. So you you would take six months for uh for you know, somebody turning like a milestone thirty forty fifty. Wait, speaking, of which how old are you again? Old enough. Okay. Just okay. Yeah. I'm how old, old are you again? <laughs> uh, <not> old going. <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so <laughs> you and I both were invited out. Yep, we uh, were. To, to, and I, I met you out in, in Rochester mm-hmm. for a surprise party for somebody's 30th. Yep. Uh, that was planned, how many days in advance would you say? All I know is I was invited the day before. The day before. The day before. I don't know when you got the invite, but I got the day before. So the idea... And I'm pretty sure I understand why it was so short notice because this this person, our good friend who turned 30 yesterday, uh, they can't be surprised by anything. No. They are, they are just sleuths at figuring out anything that's going on around yeah, them. He's, and he's my ass. He's got a fucking spider sense. He's <laughs> really good at throwing surprise parties. Though, so he's managed to do that get me a couple times. <laughs> I contributed on that one. So the idea was was that, you know, you would go out and and I would be able to get out there and and he had no idea. No idea we were coming. No idea we were coming. And his the idea... girlfriend said it was just going to be him and his best friend and her and nobody else. And so so the idea was to just short notice as short as possible that way he can't figure it out there's no s- secret planning anything he just can't figure it out because it's just not enough time to figure it out so you were there for like what 10 minutes before i showed up yep and so we're both just sitting there and it's 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 at a hibachi place so unfortunately you have to you can't just like sit down at at the table and wait at the table uh, for the hibachi place they needed they needed the entire party to be there so we're just kind of sitting there by the door and we had this one guy who was just going in and out on oh, his cell phone it was annoying so i'm like oh look there's a sh- no and, it's oh, him oh, again there? oh no no yeah. it's just this guy again oh oh, oh yep. no. <sighs> constant just in and out on his cell phone just talk on your fucking cell phone in the in the, in the restaurant man it, it's whatever you or stay do. outside or stay outside why pace between the foyer uh winter oh yeah that's a thing that is a thing <laughs> so, so we're sitting there I'm waiting. I'm gonna remind you, we live in fucking New York. Yeah, but it was actually warm yesterday. We got up to 37. It was great. Fuck off. <laughs> so we're we're sitting there waiting and being just jumpy on the edge. Like, oh, 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 yep, oh, no, getting ready no. to go. Surprise. So it, it eventually got to the point of the boy who cried wolf, where anytime the door opened, we we're just like, "Fuck it, it's this guy again." Yeah, we just ignored it. And we're just sitting there like, "Fuck it, it's just this guy again." And it turns out... I almost scared two kids when they came in. Remember that? Yeah. Two kids come in and we're like, Hey! Oh, sorry, you're not... No? no. 
<laughs> We're just kind of staring at us like, Ooh. well, I, I, I see, I see crack is moving into this part of the city. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but uh, he eventually shows up, uh, and we're just kind of sitting there on our phones at this point, just yeah. like, all right, fuck it, whatever. And yeah, there goes there goes any chance of surprising him. But also, he wasn't surprised anyway. Yeah, he, he comes knew. in and he just looks, and his face is totally calm, and he's like, "Oh, there you are." Oh, there you are. It's like, wait, how? And he's he's good. He's a god. He literally took a conversation I had with Ua. And put two and two together. He's full of shit. That's what he said. I will I will fight him on that. He did not get any information from me because I didn't know it was happening until way after that conversation I had with him. I was trying to make separate plans because I like I said, I'm having a four day weekend right now. I haven't seen his sorry ass in a few months, so I figured, okay, let's try to get do a get together, see if we can do something. No. He, he said that he was busy, and I'm, I respect that, so I didn't push any further. Apparently, he took that as a measure of, oh, I guess something's going to happen tonight. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. And immediately, he went and jumped and went, Dusty's coming out. And that's, and he knew. You would think maybe he wouldn't know that I was going to be there, too. Maybe. No. You're like, oh, it's, it's Dusty's coming out. I've known her for, for a long, long time, you know. Yep. Maybe, maybe I was I was a wild card there. No. 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 He he just said, fuck it, she's coming out, everyone's coming out. Yep. I guess I guess he just He would he would have been he wouldn't have been surprised if 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 uh if the president of China was there. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, how you doing? I knew you were coming. <laughs> he's he's a sly one, but yet every time I think I'm not having a party or something, either he does something or Yue does something and then I get into trouble. By the way, in what three years I'm gonna hide. So I'm not I'm telling me your age. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna tell you anything, and I'm not gonna do anything because I don't. I don't. You I'm don't not, do that. I'm not good at birthdays. I'm not good at birthdays. I'm not good at holidays. I'm not good at gift giving. Actually, that's wrong because you got the perfect gift for him. I didn't. Not... I I figure showing up thirtieth party. That's all I need to do because last minute. No, no, he shows up with a present. Oh yeah, I, I showed up with uh, shot glasses from uh, Dragon Ball Z. It's immediately him and Hi. Right? Me, oh, me, Ball Z me, Lee, our friend and our other friend that was there where we're like, oh, I can't wait to use this one, this one. They're all excited and I'm going, I should have done that. It took me three seconds of looking at those Dragon Ball Z shot glasses to go, yeah. Oh I'm no, sure I feel even worse. <laughs> three seconds of just looking at it. I'm assuming that if you had more time to prepare, you would have spent like weeks just looking at it. Usually if I know there's this important birthday coming up, I usually spend a month or two looking for the perfect gift and finding it for the price I want to pay. That's usually what takes longest. I'll go, I want to get this, but I'm not paying that. The difference between men and women, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the funny men thing will go that... out and go, shit, that's $126. Yeah, fuck it, whatever. Not me. <laughs> Yeah, the sad thing is that you're actually pretty damn on the mark right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the mark. Nope. I, I'm going to go uh, every time I'm going to go, uh, this is what I want to get. This is what I want to pay. It's like I got a Christmas present for somebody that I am still waiting for to arrive because I had to wait for it to, to get to where I wanted it to be. You have to fight that person now, don't you? What? Did it Did it, Did it? it ship? I haven't checked this morning. I'm, it better have if it you're hasn't. Gonna, you're going to fight that person. If it hasn't, I'm going to go sick eBay you're gonna, you're and gonna PayPal on them. Out. You're gonna fly out to wherever they yes, are. Yes, because this I can't replace this. It's a one of a kind thing. I have to have it. You have to have it. Have to. You have to have it. It's too perfect. Uh huh. Uh huh. Great. Yeah, that's that's another thing that's wrong with gift giving. It's it's too perfect. I gotta have it. I like seeing people's faces when I get the right present at the right time. Yue does the same thing. Well, that's because I know you and I know what you need. Yeah. Whether you agree with it or not. I do appreciate the new sheet set, though. Uh huh. I'm gonna and be so cozy. Kitchen, and half your kitchen is bought by me. Yes. Meanwhile, you're all like, "This is gonna be perfect for collecting dust on the shelf." Nope. This is a usable thing. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. We'll well, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Also, if I could just segment back to the surprise party, you're the one who knew who's known this guy the longest. Mm -hmm. For shame. For shame. <laughs> what? For shame. What did I do? Ding, 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 ding. Shame. <laughs> Why am I mean shame? What did I do? Shame. 
So, Salem, I hear that you had a very interesting experience last week so due I, to the evil S-word. Yeah, so... That was not a fun phone call to receive. Snow sucks. <laughs> New York sucks. <laughs> what about ice? Wait, you like ice? Wait, ice is... <laughs> ice is okay if you're putting ice in, like, my whiskey. Damn straight. But if you're putting ice on my morning commute, ice sucks. Yeah? You think? Yeah. So... I, as of last Monday, was, keyword, the proud owner of probably the world's last 1998 Dodge Neon. I haven't seen one on the road other than yours. Yeah. Yeah, one of the advantages to formerly working at a car wash, I used to see those a lot. Really? been out of that game for over five years but dodge neons i actually used to see those quite often wow that was five years ago yeah so my Let's put story way. is still relevant yeah your story's still relevant. i told the mechanic that my best one of my best friends to drive one of those he said they're not even on the road anymore yeah so <laughs> coming from a mechanic whom i trust i think <laughs> that i never said was you should trust me the last 1998 dodge neon on the road mm-hmm. <laughs> Until last Tuesday, Tuesday, I'm on my way driving into work and I, uh, I'm going 35, 40 miles an hour on the expressway because mm-hmm. that's what you do when you know that there's black ice and you know that it's snowing and you know, it's five in the morning and the plows haven't been out yet. And that oh, route's yeah. what? 65 normally? Yeah, 55. it's normally 60. It's, it's, no, it's 65. 65. On, on oh, sorry. Miles. I was on a different stretch. Yeah. And so, uh. I'm just driving, clenching my butt, <laughs> clenching the steering wheel, and uh, I, don't, I don't know what happened. I want to say it was the back tires that just decided, you know what, fuck you, dude. And uh, and it just, I'm I'm turning one way. I'm trying to gently pull the wheel to turn turn back, and and it's just it's just a slide fest. I was not pressing the gas pedal. I was not pressing the brake pedal. Those are the things that you, you nope. the car is supposed to correct itself kind yeah, of thing. And you don't, steer. don't slam on the brakes. Um, try to steer away. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I mean? Um, that none of that worked. None of that worked. And I fishtailed it pretty damn hard. Um, the, the neon was completely backwards in the road before it went into the ditch and it goes screaming into the ditch with me just kind of just jostling around in this piece of shit and uh and then it's like up on its side for a bit as it's coming to its descent and then you've all seen it in the movies it's on its side and then just like a second or two passes which is the longest second or two in the world oh yeah before it finally just goes and goes back down onto all four of the tires there. But um Then how did your front end get damaged? You're asking questions that I have no idea the answer to. What Sim- I do know is similar to story that I can segment off of this, but anyways, continue. What I do know is that nineteen ninety eight Dodge Neon with absolutely no working dashboard dash lights dash anything also doesn't have working airbag because when those things aren't working it's connected to the same wiring for the airbag so the airbag didn't deploy which is good because if the airbag did deploy it would have deployed by the time i hit the uh, ditch and by the time i was hitting the ditch i was about I guess half a foot off of my seat. So if the airbag deployed, it would have gone off into my, like right under my chin, put my head back and snapped my neck and murdered me right there. I'd have been dead, gone, period. No pain, but that's not the point. I'd have been gone. See, I'm not religious by any stretch of the imagination. I'm Wiccan. But even I have to say that there was some you you had someone paying you for I like to think a it was lot forest. of good luck. I like to think either a it was forest 
mm-hmm. or B, the car sacrificed itself for me. No, it said, I it think said, Forrest went, no, this dude, not in my car. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, those were three three phone calls I didn't want to make the first one to 911 because I did damage the guardrail. You have to call 911 yes, and you have to get the police involved there. Uh, and then a phone call out to my boss saying, hey, guess who's not coming into work yep. for reasons. <laughs> I've done that phone call and then before. let me guess the phone call to me going what do I do now yeah the phone call to you going okay so you 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 know about this kind of stuff right and you're like what kind of stuff and I said being in a ditch yeah he didn't exactly let me know nicely what happened no he, he, I went woke up and I'm like you're what what wait run that by me again i wasn't very nice to the um the 911 operator either well when you're in shock and you're scared it can be excusable was... what did you do he's like are there are there any hazards on the road yeah the fucking snow <laughs> you idiot no but uh i felt bad i shouldn't have said that and i did apologize but yeah that was not that was not very fun so I ended up calling you one because I think I I think you were in that situation once before, but yep. also you know how to buy a vehicle. Yep. And that is exactly what I needed to do because Well the first thing I told you to do is call your insurance company. I, I <laughs> Let them know you had an accident. So I did about call that. my insurance company. It's one of those thank you for calling insurance company name. Press one for this. Press two for that. Oh Press wait, 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 wait! I was just about to say you 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 missed the Spanish part of yes. that menu. <laughs> Press three for Spanish, and I'm sitting there going, "Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not going to call the insurance company." So I actually will admit I called for him. Yeah, and then got told, "You're not him. You can't do this." <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, the the point of me calling you was to get to a live person here is the actual person who needs to talk to you hands over phone yeah so so yeah, i'm guessing he wasn't home yet oh he I had to, got he, you. the tow truck driver had to take him to his house i had to get to his house to get him because he doesn't have a car now so, so i'm like i'll just take care of this from the, uh, no i won't so i'm going to guess somewhere between accidents and recovery that's when you called and asked for my advice yeah because i went through something similar in the last couple of years yeah. actually more similar to his situation than yours mm-hmm. so for anyone who's still listening and is interested <laughs> um <laughs> no one likes to listen to me what can i say um about three years ago, my brother and I were leaving for vacation. Have my car packed to the nines because we were doing a camping trip. And, you know, completely ready, get, getting on the road. It's 6 a.m. Nobody's, dri- nobody's driving on this. And it's a Saturday morning, too, so I knew we were perfectly fine. Driving down the highway... One thing led to another. I'm not going to go into the specifics of it because it got dirty real quickly. But essentially it led to us being rear-ended so hard, the car not only flipped so that it did a barrel roll, it also did a 270-degree counterclockwise turn, ending with us in the grass about a good 50 yards away from the highway. At which point... I'm very dazily trying to recoup myself in the passenger seat. He's in the driver's seat. And I notice that the airbags have deployed. My windshield is slightly caved in. There's dirt all over the place. And I don't have my glasses anymore. And I'm just looking around. I make sure that he's okay. I make sure I'm okay. And my car is not okay. (laughs) Well, yeah. So you said 50 yards. That's 150 feet. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Uh, that's that's bigger than my imagination. Um, the funny thing on this, if you find any humor, is six months prior to this accident, I had just bought that car from a dealership after trading in my 2002 Pontiac Sunfire. The car that I totaled was a 2013 Ford Fiesta. 
with all of the modern day safety features and airbags and this, that, and the other thing. I maintain to this day, had we been in my Pontiac, I would not be here talking to you lovely folks anymore because that accident should have absolutely killed us. Yeah. 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 So so much so that the people not only did the 911 operators say that we should have been dead, the first responders said we should have been dead, the cops said you are two lucky motherfuckers, the people at the collision shop, we had everyone clear out of the collision shop to look at this and say, how are you two still standing? The only a- the only injury on either of us was an airbag burn down my elbow about an inch and a half long and no wider than a knife cut. Speaking of cops. So you're supposed to get ticketed when you do something and it's like if, if it's clearly you're the one who gets into the accident yeah. by yourself they got the unsafe driving condition the ticket all unsafe kinds of fun stuff. driving condition ticket so this cop that uh when they when they came and it was just a local police officer that came to yeah, well, uh, you assess. i got to deal with state troopers yeah, yeah right state troopers <laughs> anyways <laughs> he said he, he he just looks at me and he's like well first off do you want to sit in a squad car so uh-huh. I sat in a squad car. It was it was nice and warm. I could tell this cop was a good cop because he didn't have a mustache. He had a full beard going. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a sign of a good cop, ladies and gentlemen. If you get pulled over and this guy's got a mustache, you're fucked. Now, if are he's, we talking old 80s and... porn stash? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like like fireman stash. Like, okay. Hi, I'm Tom Tucker. <laughs> like, uh-huh. if, if he's got that or if he's got clean shaven, you're screwed. But if he's if he's rocking a little bit of that stubble, he's got that beard going, you're, you got a good cop. Um, if it's a female, I'm assuming, I, I don't know how to do this for female cops, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, so I'm sitting in the, uh, the passenger side of his squad car going, yay, I'm arrested. <laughs> 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 and, um, and he turns to me and he's like, yeah, I'm not going to issue a ticket for you. And I'm like, oh, great. Why? <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like dude your life fucking sucks enough as it is i'm not gonna make it worse how it's, did he know it did though because i just wrecked my car it was a 98 neon <laughs> that probably oh yeah I, I had all the money in the world <laughs> to now, afford something good now that's a that's a guy that actually will listen and do what's right by him i like cops like that Mm -hmm. they could be a douchebag and they could go with that quota that we they claim they don't have but we know that they do no that was a good guy that was that was a decent guy no need to issue a ticket for a guy who's just sitting there going fuck so real quickly i don't mean a segment too or segue too far off of this but did i tell you about the time that i got thrown into a virginia state troopers car no what state were you in Virginia. I'm just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> so. I didn't want things to be weird. I didn't want you being up here in New York to be like, all right, something happened. All right, get in the car. This is <laughs> Virginia. No, 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 no. Um, so I actually had the experience one time of being thrown into a Virginia State Troopers squad car, completely hogtied. Like the pole leash, arms dragging out the window not sitting comfortably my legs are restrained like you were about to be put over the spit fire by an <laughs> absolutely okay 100 and outside the squad car you see the rest of my family laughing at me like an idiot seeing me in this situation i think now's a good time to mention the fact that my cousin is a state trooper for the state of virginia okay great. and we were coming to visit him after a trip down to Myrtle Beach one year, and he asks if anyone wants to go in the squad car, and obviously we all say, sure, why not? And he's like, who wants to get hogtied? And my father volunteers me. Oh, geez. I give him the biggest stink guy in the world, and I am about that close away from cussing him out, at which point he starts hogtying me, and I'm like, fuck it, let's do this Can thing. Can you do me a favor? Can you describe on the microphone how much that close was? Because I know we saw it. Uh, I was getting the word fuck you ready and knowing full well that my stepmom hates when I cuss in any fashion whatsoever, but I, I, I had the F 
coming out, at which point my cousin already had my arms bound, and I'm like, okay, forget this. Honestly, man, I was just going to describe that as half chub, but thank you. Yeah, no problem. Moving on. <laughs> so, did you finally get a new vehicle? Yes. I, I, I am now driving a 2014 Chevy Malibu. It's cherry red. Ooh, nice. It's a, it's a definitely got... You're welcome. Yeah. So, how did, uh, how did that work at the... The dealership. So we, this is the first time I've ever actually been to a dealership um, to get a vehicle. Most of the time, my vehicle, I either, I either bought it from a family friend or I just had somebody, Forrest, rest your soul, just give it to me and say, well, you need to give me a dollar because there needs to be a monetary exchange. But yeah, it's yours. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's why I got the phone call of what do I do now? Yeah, because I, I didn't know what to do. So the first thing I do is go and look at every dealer online to see what's available, ask him what his budget is, and tell him what dealer we're going to go see. Then I go to check him out, and he's actually in pain. So we go to the ER, and we skip buying car for a day just to make sure he was okay. <laughs> yeah, the fun part about that day, aside from the ER, was that we had to uh, get the license plate. Oh, yeah. We had to get the license plate, and we had the the one license plate that was on the the back of the vehicle, which yep. was unscathed. The back of the vehicle was fine, so we took the license plate off of there, huh. and yeah. then we go up to the uh, the guy who owns the. Uh, yes, I took him over. Um, to, I took him over to the truck driver's place, and I, we had to clean out his car because mm-hmm. they're they're gonna junk the cars. There's yeah. no saving it, yeah. and there's no front license plate. So the first question we say is, "Where is the license plate?" And he goes, "Probably back where the accident was." Gee, that kind of sounds familiar with what happened to me. We had the front license plate, but the back end, which is the part that got completely caved in, we never found that license plate. So I take him out to where the accident site was, and of course, there's lots of snow. Oh, yeah. He was driving a white car. We get to to (laughs) Vietnam flashback my way into into this ditch. And, uh, so I told him, let me look first. So I'm walking and I see this weird white thing. I pull it out and it's a, a good two feet of his car and his license plate. And, so I'm, license like, plate. and I'm waving. I'm going, look, I got it. We're good. <laughs> so wait a minute, I, how long did that take? Uh, not, I, even. not even 30 seconds. I literally went, oh, well, damn. I literally went, that snow looks weird. Here it is. And so I, I got this chunk of vehicle in my hand with license plate, and I just got people passing us on the highway because we're parked on the other yeah. side of the highway, so we need to walk across the uh, the highway. And I'm just kind of like, yeah, I did it. Whoa, I got, I got my <laughs> That's when I decided plate. he's totally lost it, and I'm going to take care of everything <laughs> these, right these now. These people just staring at us as I just <laughs> driving by. <laughs> oh, man. So talking to the guy at the dealership yeah so i i, I coach him before we go in because he's never done this before don't yeah. like the car gotta get warm yeah i can't i can't i can't like when we do the test drive i can't like it i gotta be all like no nope, not a good car but go and, on. and this is the price that we can pay this is what it should be worth he's gonna offer you a malibu and when he does go go eh i don't know we'll take a look at it you know you know, because I told him what the dealer was going to do. And the dealer did exactly what I said he was going to do. Yeah, we weren't expecting that when, like, we asked a question, say, like, what were the recalls on the vehicle? Or, Mind you, I'm um, there going, there were six recalls on this vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask him about them. And he's or, like, I have to go in and talk. Or questions about, like, hey, does this vehicle have a spare tire? Does this vehicle have a uh, a jack? Yeah, which it did not. He which, had it, a, which it didn't. It did by the time we left, though, because I'm a stickler for these things. But this, oh, absolutely. This guy, with every single question <laughs> that we throw at him, bless his soul, gets up and goes, I got to talk to somebody else about that. I don't, is that normal? Well, yes. No, yeah, that's yes. actually 100% normal because as someone who went through two cars over the course of less than seven months, I went to two different dealerships on this. Um, depending on what the dealership is, because you have blank Chevy, blank Ford, yada, yada, yada. Well, yeah. They are very knowledgeable on the specific type of vehicle that is in their name well this one is in their name we actually went to a chevy dealership so, but yeah. that notwithstanding a lot of these dealerships even if it is in their name they don't know all the ins and outs of every year make and model that and every each time, one's different that and he was also doing something out every time he went back in to talk to the manager he's giving the manager okay these guys seem to know what they're talking about so we can't do this this and this they that it's a game plan mm-hmm because they, they want the most out of the money. And and every time they came back and we had another question for him that he went, crap, they know about that. And they went back in. 
So yeah, insert Chevy dealer here. We did our homework and and we got maybe an 85, which was better than what I did when I did my homework in school. <laughs> you did your homework in school? No. I didn't think so. Okay. So uh, so there was the uh, the whole test drive. And the test drive was actually literally to just go to my house so that I can pick up some yeah. like proof. This of guy it. goes, doesn't bring proof of uh, proof of address or anything he needs. I, I figured he knew to do this. I should have known better. <laughs> so we're like, we need to test drive to our house to get the stuff that he should have had in the first place. And the guy's like, okay. Okay. Wait, wait a minute. You, you did... Did you even go with your license with you? I went with my license that, with me. The banks that we that he had to go through needed a proof of address beyond the license. They had to have a brill or something else. They wanted secondary proof. Oh, bloody hell. Because he had only recently moved to the area. Oh, so I that just, makes far more sense. I decided to play it safe, and I brought, like, four different things. He, he comes out of the house with a stack. like He's like, I've got this bill. i got this here. i got this here. And he's like, what is that, all your mail? He's like, yes. Yes, this is all my mail. <laughs> This is all of the mail that I've ever received. I always say better to be over than underprepared. I'm so. just, I'm, at this point, I'm just laughing, going, you've never done this before. I can tell. But, it's uh, adorable. I, I spent the entire uh, trip uh, to to my house and then back to the dealership, which was about 10 minutes each 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 trip there for the, um, for the test drive, just prepping myself, going, yeah, it was a car. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I love I loved oh. the car the entire way there. I was like, yeah, I love this car. Oh my god, this car is so great. I Holy knew crap. You would. That's why I picked it. Holy oh. crap, it's got bells and whistles. I I used to have a a, a, a crank window. This one's got <laughs> buttons. <laughs> yeah, but, so, all the prep work in the world. Second, you get behind that wheel, it kind of goes out the window. No, but, no, uh, no. He was actually good. The guy the guy gets out of the car and goes, "So, what do you think?" And his answer? Well, I'm not gonna name my children after it. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. That's all I said. And I just left it at that. I was like, oh, I'm not going to do And of job. course, he's like, he's like, no, you don't have a car to trade in. So we're probably going to have to do registration. He's like, no, no, we're going to roll over the plates. And, and the guy's like, what? And then he pulls out and the I piece pull, of the car. I, I pull out the piece of the car. <laughs> with the license plate attached. <laughs> with the demented license plate attached to it going, you got a screwdriver? <laughs> <laughs> to which the answer is yes. yes no, he yes. actually took it back to the body shop so they could flatten it out and make it into a flat license plate again. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, the guy's face was like, "Okay, okay, that's a thing." Okay, and he go, at the whole time he's like, "Does that mean you want the car?" And I'm going, "I'm not sure yet." But there's a couple more questions. I threw more questions at the poor man. <laughs> it was we 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 decided that since I I was told by the ER to not work for a couple of days, uh, we had all the time in the world. Yep. To just we stayed, fuck with the guy. We stayed there four hours to get the deal. I, I thought he deserved. Uh, it was it was it was worth putting myself in the ditch. It was worth it. Now and you now, have a monthly payment. Aren't you excited? Yeah, shut up. Uh, I, I'm not, knock I'm not, on wood. Mine yeah. is owned. I'm not excited about that. Speaking of driving, do you want to get drunk? Well, no, we're not going to get drunk. We're going to taste test again. Uh, yeah, what the hell is this thing that you poured in front of Okay, It's All right, our so, weekly taste test. So we, we're, we're going to be trying our best to do a weekly taste test. I have here in my hand, it's a bottle called Zombie Killer. Uh, so Zombie Killer, uh, where are you guys coming out of Zombie Killer? It doesn't say. Congratulations. It's got to say. It's got to say on it? Yeah. I can't, I can't tell That's... where it says that Zombie Killer comes out of. That's but I will do my best to read the description. Oh, there we go. Michigan. Michigan. Oh, well, this is going to suck. <laughs> hey, you got to trust whoever gave that to you. So Because that's do, not one of my Viking friends. I'm going to do my, my best to read the description here. Uh, so it, it's it's called Bee Nectar Cider. Um, and it's uh, dedicated to the freaks and the geeks. What started this top secret experiment with Michigan honey? Oh, it said it right there, Michigan. <laughs> With Michigan honey cherries, apple cider became a viral epidemic. It won't be easy to survive, so grab your weapons and don't forget this bottle for backup. Serve cold. Zombies hate the cold. Beware. <laughs> That's literally on the bottle. So this was brewed, it looks like, in 2019. So again, we're not going to be enjoying it like people at a wine tasting going oh the, the well, aroma we can still waft it. of it sitting there actually oh, that yes. smells nice in, in the in you, the you cellar. Do realize that we have cups yeah already we, with it poured yeah, in we already yes have but it's easier to waft it from the bottle yeah so all right this smells way better than the one we tried last week 
Everybody, yeah, so it's a cider. It's a cider that's uh, made with honey. Uh, this looks like what I'm looking at right now before before we drink it. It it's looks peach. like a rosé. Well, it's like a peachish color. So it looks kind of rosé. Um, yeah, it's pretty. Woohoo. Let's all take a sniff and say what we think about the sniff. Actually, it's hard cider with honey and cherry. Honey and cherry. That, oh, explain so that, the that, color. that explains the color. That explains the color. So what do you think about the sniff? It smells like every other cider I've ever had, which means that I'm probably not going to find this amusing, because a lot of ciders are hoppy, and I do not care for hops. All right. No, it doesn't smell like the ciders I've smelt. There's definitely something different in there, It, but I, I guess it must be the cherry, because it's got a more of a sweet scent than most of the meads we've tried before in ciders. It's winter, and my nose doesn't work. <laughs> Touche. So on to the taste test. <laughs> Okay, no, this is good. This this I reminds like this. me of just it okay. just reminds no me of like a yeah. no hops. It just reminds me of like an angry orchard. Yeah, that's I like I I went out to the bar and I said fuck it I hate myself let's put angry orchard on tap. Yeah, and I I decided to do that. That's 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 what I'm drinking right now. It's nothing that I would go back to on a regular basis. I'm certainly not going to spend seven ninety nine on a not even liter bottle. Yeah, no, that no. that's a small bottle for that price point. Yeah. And is... So I'm not I'm not going to sit here and, and I, at, at, I, yeah five hundred milliliters. I will is half say a liter. that the cherry overwhelms the apple taste of the cider, so it doesn't taste like cider point. anymore. I think that's the point. So, <laughs> but it's not a zombie killer. Yeah, I don't know what what the whole zombie killer thing is going on. I think that's just their that's their shtick their trying shtick. to get people to buy it because it's different and funny label. But I, will... I gotta admit the label is funny. I mean, look, they actually have a uh, zombie apple being killed by a cherry with a sword, so that's kind of neat. That's kind of cool. Yeah, the blood effect is pretty cool. But uh, compared to our last beverage, it is. I hate to do this because it sounds bad, but it tastes so much better than Ragnarok. Yeah. Ragnarok was a diff- This is This yeah. is much better tasting. It's much more enjoyable. I don't find Clearly myself- Clearly you and I remember Ragnarok very differently. No, 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 no. We had a bottle of mead last it's week that called was Ragnarok. Called a joke. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on, Dusty. You're at the Times now. Come on. But um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out, buy this, and go, yeah, time to get fucked up on Zombie Killer. But I don't know. This is probably. I don't think you're supposed to. This is probably for the hipsters doing exactly what we're doing right now. Yeah, it's just. I think it's just for casual. Let's just have a little bit of, you know, cider that tastes a little bit different. Yeah. So shout out to uh, Anacosti in in Rome, New York. Yep, because they're the ones who sold us this lovely bottle, right? They're the ones who sold it for $8. Jesus Christ. $8 for, for 500 milliliters, man. I mean, you know what? They made the sale. Good for them. Well, you like Anacosti. I do love Anacosti. They're, love ni- they're, they're nice people. They're great people. And <laughs> they, they help my addiction to Seagram's. I get it by the case now there. It's terrible. Yeah. How There's much is a case? There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm not going there. How much is a case? What's the bottle deposit on that case? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you don't know? It's $2.04. Is it? Yeah, it's because it's 24 in that case. Okay. Yeah. How much are you paying for the case? How much are you paying for that case? <laughs> I'm curious. I'm no. I'm. I'm legitimately curious, so I know if, if it's cheaper <laughs> than where I get it. She's paying literally a dollar a bottle. Yeah. Oh, so that's the same as anywhere else you can get Seagrams. Yeah. The difference is I can get a case of the Black Cherry Fizz. Just an entire case of Black Cherry Fizz. That's all I get. She's. I, I guess we're back onto the gambling addiction. <laughs> What's wrong with my black cherry fizz? I like it. We're gonna put we're gonna put the uh, the number for for gambling addiction in the in the uh, description of this video. And if you have a gambling problem, please be sure to call this number. <laughs> if you have a drinking problem, I do uh, not have a drinking problem. You don't have a, uh, trust me. I in all the years that I've known you, and I've been trying so desperately to get you to break out of the habit of. All alcohol tastes icky. I got out of that habit. Yeah, it only took me, like, what, five years of convincing and finally finding something that you went, hmm, I might with. be a tad stubborn. I don't have a drinking problem. Yes, you do. I have it figured out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't have a drinking problem. It may sound like I got one on occasion, but I don't have one. All right, so... We are we're gonna do a uh, very special thank you because this is our this is our first uh, podcast 
uh, under our good friends, the Realm of the Mist. Yeah, we're no longer and, just putting on YouTube saying beta. Yeah, we're no longer we're no longer in beta. No. So, so well, we're probably still in beta. Let's yeah, be well, here. we're new to them. They might find issues and want to change and tweak some things. But that's okay. It's nice to be picked up by someone. But uh, yeah, so a, a huge thank you to Realm of the Mist. Check out all their YouTube videos they have out there for all their podcasters. They got all kinds of things you can. Well, explore. they have more than just YouTube. They're on Spotify. That's true. Uh, I couldn't tell you any other <laughs> device that they're on because I completely forgot. But uh, there's they they outsource to to different medias and they have all kinds of different things. Our our podcast is not like any of the other stuff they have. Yeah, so there's you have a different variety uh, for whatever you're interested in. Uh, please check out Realm of the Mist. Yeah. Um, but so thank you for for Realm of the Mist and uh, thank you UA for for joining us. Absolutely. So what man. are we going to discuss next week, there okay. Salem? <laughs> So, uh, actually, tune in next week uh, when we look further into the autobiography of uh, Nicholas Knack from Margaretville, New York, uh, who has claimed to have a large bovine penis and a masturbation problem, hence explaining the knick-knack paddywhack. Good night, folks, or goodbye. <laughs> Take care, everybody. From celebrity interviews to Star Wars, to things that shouldn't be said but had to be said, to conspiracy theories, or maybe just a night of playing Dungeons and Dragons, whatever the podcast you're looking for can be found here at Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Make sure you check out all of our shows because there's something for everybody there.